Hey, welcome everybody to week number four of our Unhealthy Small Group series where we are building life-giving relationships that will help us move forward to a healthier version of ourselves. That is the power of small group and relationships. Hey, I want to just really quickly cover the goal of our small groups. I hope this gets in your heart. What do we wanna do? We wanna make friends because Christian friendships really matter. And when we make friends, we, 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 we really feel safe, we have community, we open up. And I want you to open up, take off the mask, be real, because that's where you find freedom and healing. And then what do we wanna do? We wanna care for one another. Life happens. So we don't wanna just meet once a week. We wanna care for each other throughout the week because life happens, sickness happens, hospitals happen, so care for one another. And we wanna to grow together. My hope is that every one of you would take one next step in your spiritual faith journey. Even somebody would step up in the near future and say, I'm gonna lead my own small group. That would be pretty, pretty amazing. And the last thing we wanna do is develop long lasting friendships. My hope is that this group will not end after six weeks, but that you would sense what God is doing and that you would desire to be in biblical community in a small group doing life together with other people because there's such power in small groups. Well, today for week number four, I wanna share something that's near and dear to my heart for us to talk about. You know, in life, we, we have times when we are just worried and, and anxious and, and really even depressed. And what do you do when you find yourself in a season of depression? You know, it's real. I know that sometimes it could be chemical. Um, and I, I understand that whole dynamic. But there are other dynamics of depression that or not sometimes just it's chemical, it's life related. And I wanna help us through this small group to tackle this whole subject of when we get worried and anxious and depressed, and I want us to all take steps forward today in our small group time. You know, in 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse three through four, it says, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba, in Judah, he left his servant there. Now, I want you to catch this now. You're gonna find out that he was in an unhealthy place. And when you're in an unhealthy place, isolation is not good. The Bible says he left his servant there and went by himself. Isolation is never good. And it goes on to say, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. So not only was he isolated, he got super isolated. He went way into the wilderness by himself. It's not good to be alone when you're not in a good place mentally and emotionally. It says he came to a broom brush, excuse me, a broom bush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. Elijah said this, I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. You know, I kind of sense a little anger with them. Lord, I've had, I've had enough. I mean, and kind of in that next verse, he, he's just being driven by his emotions. He, he, he feels, has the emotion of just hopelessness. I'm I want to die. He has this emotion of, of worthlessness. He's having this roller coaster of emotions. Right now, I mean, he, if you're not familiar with the story, he had just defeated, you know, a lot of prophets of Baal, like over 400 of them. He won this huge battle called Fire Down from Heaven. And now he's running from this lady named Jezebel and ready to die. I mean, his emotions are just all over the place. Come on, have you been there before? Elijah allowed his highs to get too high and his lows to get too low. And you know what I would say to Elijah when I say to all of us, Elijah, halt, halt. You're in a dangerous place. I want that, those four letters to stick in your mind. Halt, halt. Hungry is the H. Angry is the A. Lonely is the L. 
and tired is the T. I would say, Elijah, you're facing halt. Watch out, Elijah. People do stupid things when they're in a bad place emotionally and mentally. And let's discuss today some biblical steps we can take when we are depressed and just emotionally and mentally drained. And, and, and the first thing that we're going to discuss is just get some rest. Get some rest. In 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 5, it says, Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, listen to what the angel says, Get up and eat. Isn't that so practical? <laughs> get up and eat. He looked around. And there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. My brother went back to sleep. <laughs> Verse seven, it says the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank strengthened by that food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. And what I really want us to notice is how, is how practical. He was in a bad place. He was depressed. He was ready for life to end. And the angel said, eat, get some rest. You can make it, you can make the journey, but you need some rest. And the first question I want us just to talk about for the next few moments is, how have you seen just taking care of yourself by just eating, eating healthier, or maybe sleeping adequately, getting six, seven, eight hours of sleep, or exercising regularly, or having a hobby, or taking a day off every week, help you become more healthy? How, how have you, have you seen that in your life? I want some of you to talk about that. We need to, people, we need to encourage one another on how we can take steps when we're feeling this depression on our life, and we've all been there. And would you open up and kind of just share right now, two or three of you, on some things that you've done practically that's kind of helped you out of that season of funk, that season of depression. What are some things that you've done that's really helped you when you've been in an emotional or mental bad place? Hey, jump out there. Let's answer that question. Okay, small group family. Here's the second question. Now, not always one of my goals for our questions is for you to really apply God's work practically, practically to your life. I think oftentimes we can be more educated beyond our obedience. So I really want us to apply it practically. So question number two, when it comes to this whole concept of taking better care of ourselves is what are some changes you could make to take better care of yourself so you can become more healthy. I mean, just practically, what are some changes you can make? Maybe you're like, man, I'm eating, I'm eating ice cream, bluebell ice cream every night. I'm going to my Brahms and getting a scoop of ice cream. I, I don't know what it might be for you. That might, when you really evaluate, wow, when I really process this, I could really make some changes and become more healthy. If I quit going to bed at 2 a.m. in the morning, I might just be able to be a little more healthy mentally and emotionally. So hey, what are some things you can do practically right now to take better care of yourself that you could become more healthy? Hey, I need three or four of you to jump out there and answer this question and bring strength to the entire small group. Jump in. Hey, as we prepare for question number three, I don't want to set your mind up with this thought about Elijah in this season that he was in. One of the things that really helped him was the presence of God, the presence of God. It says in 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 11, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord for the Lord is about to pass by. One moment in God's presence can change everything. That's why I believe in attending church every 
single week because one moment can change your life. Deeper night every month. Being a part of our prayer and fasting seasons. You know, whatever events our church is having, be a part of it because one moment can change your life. Having a daily time with God, so important. Being in a small group faithfully is so important because one moment can change your life. I can remember when I was in a place of fighting depression in my life. I was in a bad season. It was one morning early in the morning. I was in my little office with the worship music on before taking my kids to school. And I was just in a bad place mentally. And I turned the worship music on so loud and began to scream and call out to God. And can I tell you, as I just cried out to God and worshiped God, a breakthrough happened in my life. Um, it was a, it was a turn. That's why I can tell you the story right now, because it was a turning point in my life. And sometimes I think we can neglect how powerful the presence of God is in our life. So here's question number three for you. Question number three. Would, would two or three of you tell us about a time in your life where maybe being in God's presence at church, at a deeper night, maybe you were even at a youth camp, or it was in your own personal prayer time, or it was in a small group moment, how it helped you out of an unhealthy place. Because that really is the power of God's prayer. I do not want us to be a people that neglect the power of God's presence. Tell us how getting in God's presence helped you out of a bad place you were in. Jump in there and let's really answer this important question. Small group family, week number four of getting more and more healthy. Don't you love it? We're having dialogue and conversation and we're talking really practical things like, hey, stop eating bluebell ice cream. You can't stay up to two in the morning. You know, we're, we're having some really practical conversations that are really game changers for our own life. Some of you, it's taking a day off uh, every single week. It's, we're really having really important conversations. And thank you for your commitment to small group and to having these authentic conversations. I hope that you're seeing that just over the last four weeks that some, some walls are coming down, maybe some masks are coming off, that you're being a little bit more vulnerable. And that's the power of small groups and building relationships is we end up becoming more comfortable and opening up. And that's why I just hope you stay committed to small group. You stay committed to week number five, week number six. And my prayer is that, hey, this small group could continue on and you could keep growing closer to God. But I'm grateful for your six week commitment to this small group. And hey, I want you to take some time right now and write down some prayer needs. Ask one another, what can I pray with you about? pray for each other and be sure this week, text somebody, check on somebody in your small group and let them know that you are praying for them. Shoot them a scripture, shoot them a word of encouragement. And hey, I'll see you next week for week five of our unhealthy small group series.